afternoon and welcome to Mid-America Nazarene University and Pioneer Field. And today's Heart of America Conference Tournament Men's Soccer first round match featuring the Central Memphis University Eagles and the MNU Pioneers. Starters first for the Eagles. In goal, number one, Nicolo Cabra. Number two, Martin O'Toole. Number five, Adrian Stokes. Number six, Basel Hernandez. Number seven, Isaac Johnson. Number eight, Alvaro Barojo. Number ten, Matios Stork. Number 11, Kuhn Schimmel. Number 12, Max Vander Aaron. Number 14, Lucas Perrin. And number 17, Jaden Johnson. The Eagles were coached by Adam Gala. He's assisted by Eli Sherman. Now let's meet the starters for the Pioneers. In goal, number 45, Enzo Carvalho. Number two, Tom Chartier. Number six, Vitus Voitel. Number seven, Guillermo Galvo. Number nine, Rick Hobenga. Number 10, Johnny Munoz. Number 14, Enzo Cozy. Number 16, Duarte Chapellas. Number 17, Nico Kebert. Number 20, Jose Munoz. And number 23, Antonio Mojica. The Pioneers are coached by Kevin Wardlaw. He's assisted by Antanas Karagiorov and Alistair Hughes. Fans, please stand. Gentlemen, please remove your hats or render a salute if you are a veteran of military service as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. David Gonzalez here with Molly, Molly Kay. Molly Kay. Good to be back. Welcome to uh, Heart of America first round conference playoff for the championship here. 1 p.m. kickoff at Olathe, Kansas Pioneer Field. And it's a windy 65 degrees. Nice and sunny, but it is quite windy. Yeah, it will be. We'll see what how that comes into play. Here we see these flags from the uh, schools all across the conference, and they are whipping around. 
So we will see. But this is better than last time for those of us who joined us with the rain. We'll take this over the rain any day of the week, I think. Woo! That was some rain. And we had some uh, frigid temperatures here over Halloween and over the weekend. Fifth coldest Halloween. You heard it right. Fifth coldest Halloween in Kansas City history. So for us with little ones that went trick-or-treating, we felt that pain. <laughs> We got a goal cam today, making its debut for the Heart of America Conference. A little sideline cam there. Nice production team going on. And we got our match. Mid-America Pioneers versus Central Methodist University. Mid-America will play in its 4-4-2. As usual, we do have an injury today. Mikel, the center back, is not playing. A little injury. They're going to set him out. A starting lineup, Enzo Carvalho. Nacho playing left back. Duarte Chapella, center back, pairing with Vitus Voitel, who took the captain's armband today. And Tom Chartier has entered the match there on the right side to play the right back. Four mids. We got Kotzi playing the center mid, the holding number six role. Tony at left mid. Nico at right mid and Johnny Munoz playing the number 10 role. And two forwards, leading goal scorer Rick Havinga and Guy Yerme. What's been the word around campus and at home? Oh, you know, we're, we're fired up for this one. As we see CMU charging here, the talk in the office and in my house uh, with, for those of you who don't know, I'm married to the assistant uh, coach, Atanas Kragyorov. Um, and he, they're concerned about set pieces today, especially with Mikel being out, um, kind of their, their main big guy back there, and CMU scoring on a lot of set pieces. That's been the talk. But they're happy to host, right? This is not normally we see CMU in the first round. I don't know, honestly, the last time that CMU, we've seen CMU in the first round, at, at our place at least. So this isn't the norm, but happy to have a home bid today for sure. Nice little ball by Johnny Munoz there. Plays in now to Havinga. He's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to charge on top of the box. The ball gets to Johnny. Nice one touch for Nacho. Climbs up the left side. Fakes across. Takes a touch. Pulls it back now and dribbles out of bounds. Absolutely, Molly. It is a, it is a honor, really, to host your first game of the conference tournament, usually backwards. As Molly had mentioned a couple games back, Central Methodist has some big coaching changes used to be the number one or number two seed in the conference and now sneaked in at number eight. You heard right, sneaked in. And normally, and normally, um, you know, CMU is not just a number one in the conference, but they've been seen at the number one spot in the country, one, two, and three, year after year after year, seems like. Won it all a couple of years back. Is that What year was that? Do you know? I do not. I think it was two years maybe, ago. Maybe 21? 2021, followed maybe, by Missouri possible. Valley the yeah. following year. And I think that was the final game in 21. I think it was Mo Val CMU in the final, which is shows to the strength of the conference here as a long ball is played long here for Nacho. Finding Tony, finding Nacho up the left-hand side. Tony, Nacho. Nice flick. Rick. On his left, driving, left, plays it across. Cleared half by CMU, Cozy finding Nacho back on the left-hand side. Nice early pressure there by Mid-America setting the tone. Uh, first dangerous chance. Rick did get a hold of it. It looked like it was going out of bounds, took a shot. Goalie quickly got his foot out and saved the first dangerous opportunity here for Pioneers. Definitely, and not a super confident clear there from them, from CMU. Like we said, conference tournament, eight teams made it past. The uh, Missouri Valley was number one, William Penn second, Mid-America third, Benedictine fourth, Park fifth, Mount Mercy sixth, uh, Central Methodist seventh. I was wrong, they got in yes, seventh. Yes, because we're two. That's Is right. Is that right, something like that? Uh, oh, third, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, Where are seven, we at? eight. Baker eight on the standings, but there might be some switches there. Yeah, I don't know how those tie breaks are, are broken. It's possible that that's 
from what my husband says, I listen sometimes, and he says that uh, what they show on the conference website is the record, but they do go off a point system. That's and so not always is that updated properly. That is correct. So we will go with the schedule, which is correct. Mid-America is hosting Central Methodist. Later on today, Park will host Benedictine. William Penn will host Mount Mercy. And Missouri Valley will host Baker. So Missouri Valley is your number one seed and conference regular season tournament, hosting eighth seed Baker. Central Methodist with the pressure and the turnover here. Nicely played by Johnny, who plays it up next. Up the left side to Nacho. Quick little combinations on the left side so far for Mid-America have worked out over the last three games with Nacho playing that left role and advancing up the field quite a bit. Definitely. And good to see Tony back in the lineup. He had missed a couple games. He's already getting quality touches in aggressive areas, attacking areas that we missed there for two games, I guess. Tom Chartier's going to He's going to keep going into the box. Cross to Guillermo. Guillermo in the box with a penalty box. Shot. Deflected. Rickafinga keeps fighting. Turns. Shot. Oh, saved by the goalie. Point blank shot inside the six. Off to the side nicely there. Saved by the goalkeeper. Nicolas Cabras from Italy. But that is good to see. That is uh, our leading goal scorer, Rick Havinga, number nine, with two dangerous opportunities already early Definitely. on. Forcing saves from the goalkeeper, always good to see. Five minutes into the game. And Mid-America is controlling this ball and getting possession. And not just possessing, but they are going up the left side, going up the right side there with the freshman Tom Chartier on the right back. Tony with the ball, nice assist through to Guillerme. Both Rick Kavinga and Guillerme went for that ball. Fought each other and unfortunately could not get that controlling touch. Looks like number 17, Johnson, up high for CMU. Playing up front. Looking at his stats here. Looks like one goal on the season and one assist. Am I reading that right? Here we go. 17, yeah. It's one and one goal, one assist for number 17. Long ball from Chapellas looking for Nacho. Headed back to the goalkeeper. And the pressure continues from m and that's for sure. And by the coaching staff, Coach Wardlaw here is on the sideline early on, making sure his team is focused and not ma making smart decisions. Not committing, committing any mistakes. Nicely covered there by Tony. Johnson with the pressure. Johnson lost it out the end line there. It will be a goal kick for the Pioneers. I'm trying to see what the formation is here for Central Methodist. They are clearly playing three center backs to match up against the two forwards. But I can't really tell yet if it's a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2. We'll keep looking here over the next two minutes. For your Central Methodist, the light, uh, starting lineup was uh, in goal, Nicolas Cabras, native of Italy. They're playing three center backs. Number two, Martin O'Toole from Chicago, Illinois. Number five, Adrian Stoke from Norway. And number six, Basile Erne, first team all uh, conference team from Switzerland. We'll go over this as those were released yesterday. American pressuring the referee as well from early on. Continue on for Central Methodist. Number 14 is playing that holding mid, Lucas Perrin from France. With number eight, Alvaro Perojo from Spain. Number seven and their captain, Isaac Johnson from Missouri. And on the left side, Cohen Schimmel. I think that's our leading goal, goal scorer there. Climbing up the left now. Nicely defended by Tom Chartier. Ooh. The assistant referee had said goal kick as it did re re ricochet off there, and the referee called the corner. 
And we have our sir, f first set piece for Central Methodist. As Molly had stated, they were Mid America where coaching staff was a little concerned about set pieces. All that pressure in on the box right there, cozied up with Enzo. Everyone on the line. Ball whipped in all the way across and out of bounds for a throw in. The wind is going that way towards the MNU goalkeeper. So in the face of Enzo, Enzo Carvalho, the MNU, MNU goalkeeper. Yeah, very interested. They crowded inside the six using that wind to the advantage. A man went down, shim on number 11. Nothing called by the referee. And Mid America will pass its first corner kick. Johnson here with the throw in for CMU. Coach calling for CMU to set it up here on the sideline. Looks like another using the throw in as some kind of set piece. Looks like it like, might be a long ball in from 17, who is also Johnson, Jayton Johnson. Rick Ovinga matches up with their tallest. Tallest with tallest there. Oh, I think that's a flip throw. It's a lot of air, nothing dangerous. Headed, offside by the referee, saves the first goal. Offside, offside by the assistant referee there, off the header. And you can kind of, you can say we got lucky there. 100%. A flip throw. We'll get a VAR no here. We'll get a VAR here with the cameras possibly and confirm that offside. Yeah, that flip throw from Jayton Johnson went more up than anything, but then the head flicking it on put it in a really dangerous area. Looked like Enzo wasn't sure whether to go for the first one or the second one. Luckily offside, called by the assistant ref referee. Out of bounds for a throw, will be MNU's ball, Nacho will take it. Mateo Stork, number 10, can't control the ball. And for the central methods, you are looking for number 11, Schimmel, and number nine, Arthur, and number 10, Stork. They have seven. Seven goals, seven goals, and six. So those are your three. Nine, ten, and eleven. Leading goal scores for Central Methodist. And I don't see six. number nine in the starting lineup. I see ten and eleven, but I don't see number nine, which is one of their top goal, goal scorers. We're not sure why he's out today. Potentially a change later on. Guillerme with a touch here, fouled, just on the edge of the attacking third for the Pioneers. A chance to set something up here if MNU wants to. And the Pioneers have had set pieces with Munoz and Nico that have been pretty dangerous and resulted in some goals by Chapellas with the header. Fourth official down here, talking with AAR, confirming that offside goal after the flick. Like you said, Chapellas is the man they look for on these headers. Usually, he scored two of them this season. And he is lined up as the last man here outside the box. Hand comes up, Munoz runs over the ball, referee holds it up. <coughs> Interesting run there, run by Munoz. Nobody picked him up. Let's see if uh, they can sneak in a little through ball to him or if they choose to play it in. Nico with the cross. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my goodness. Vitus cannot get a toe on that and it bounced just wide of the goal. Any little touch there would have been enough to probably redirect the goal, the ball into the goal. Definitely, Vitos Voitol was the dangerous looking man there and it's just barely went wide. Wind finally let down a little bit. Sun's out, a little bit nicer. Man down for for CMU looks like number 14. I believe that says 14. Yes. Lucas per Perrin from France. Looks like just a collision on that set piece. Hopefully everything okay and just a knock.
Goal kick by CMU. Kicking with the wind. Finds his front man, Johnson, playing it wide. Oh, never mind. Thought he was going to play it wide. Wow, he's off. They didn't call him off. That sure looked like what he was off, wasn't he? Yeah, it sure did. Johnson, a uh, couple little fancy footworks. Could not control the other one, but the long touch was picked up by the number 10, Stork, who clear, got in. Looked like offside. The referee said play on 1v1, but Carvalho was off his line quickly and wrapped that ball up in America. Definitely. Dangerous opportunity there for CMU. The fourth official here in front of us signaled that it was Voitel who kept him on. Nice call there. Chat here on the cameras. Quick little replay showed onside there. Nacho with the ball quickly to Tony. Wynn takes that ball out of bounds. And Pioneer coach Kevin Orla here, making sure his back line is uniform, making sure they're on the same line, making sure they're focused. That's, you know, Molly, same, same with any sport. It, it all comes down to details sometimes in this, especially in conference tournament times and postseason. Definitely. These, this team has already played each other once this year. Tom Chartier making a run there, but dispossessed and a chance for the Eagles to drive. Definitely this time of year, playing a team a second time, it comes down to details and discipline. Schimmel to Stork, Stork with the ball, back out. Now to Van der Erden. Long switch to the captain. Johnson with the ball, crosses it in, Nacho. Off of Nacho's chest and off to a throw in for Central Methodist. We'll see if they do another flip throw or not. And sure enough, anytime there's a throw in, there's a corner kick. Set pieces are lined up. Both teams organizing in the box. Comes a throw by Johnson. Cleared off by Nacho and Munoz. And lastly, Nacho clears long one. Nico's going to fight for this ball. Half field. Nico dispossessing O2. He's win the ball. Now we got a 2v1. Plays with Taringa for a 1v1. Uh, nice switch to Tony. He's going to get into the box. Traps. Could not get the cross in. And a little bit of a wasted opportunity there after Nico got that ball a half field with a nice play into Rick. We had a 2v1. And maybe we just rushed it a little bit with Tony. The defender was able to recover that run and just nicely defended there against Tony. Definitely. But nice nice job clearing the ball from the set piece after they had scored. Uh, it, it was called back from offside. Cleared the ball and Nico won a nice 50-50 challenge here to create a 2v1 opportunity for the Pioneers. 16 minutes game, uh, 16 minutes in already, 28 left. 0-0 zero, zero tie here at Pioneer Field. And these two teams respect uh, each other a lot. As Molly was saying, they faced off twice, twice. I mean, they face off twice every year, basically. It's true. Both teams consistently making the postseason. Oftentimes, their paths cross in the postseason. Just a matter of in the conference, at the national level, both high-level soccer clubs here today. Yeah, the whole conference knows, I would say, you know, if, they, if you tell me top three teams, they would tell you Missouri Valley, Central Methodist, and Mid-America, Nazarene University. So one team will advance, and the other one will eliminate and hope for the best. We've got no foul here, no foul by the referee on Chappellas, and we got a counterattack for Central Methodist, plays it in to Storkel. A little bit out wide, Stork. He does not get there. Pioneers all over the referee. Referee does not like that's going to have come talk to the center. Center official is going to come talk to the coach. A little awkward exchange here by the center referee. And that is just how important this game is, not only on the field, but from the benches as well, coaches. Pitus with the captain armband today. In Miguel's absence, plays it to Nico. Nico Guillermo wins the ball, now plays to Johnny. 
Gianni tries to play it in and gets intercepted by Central Methodist. And that's a player we haven't seen much of yet today is Johnny Munoz. And that is who Mid America's game usually goes through. So we want we need to get him the ball and get him more involved and make sure he gets a little combinations with Rick. Absolutely. Munoz and Hovinga both named the first team all conference list. Yesterday was released, Yesterday. like you said, but those are our two first com first team all-conference nominees and both well-deserving and huge no honor. surprise. Absolutely. Huge honor. Oh, hold on. We got Central Methodist, top of the box, right-footed, crosses it in. Johnson cuts. Now back to the PK mark, deflected by Vitus and Central Methodist. It's a little dangerous here in the box. 100%. I mean, you're looking a little bit out of sorts. It's a different back line than normal, but still, all these guys play a lot of minutes for the Pioneers. But they're number 17, Jayton Johnson. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking for some quick, fast ball skills. Definitely. I'm wondering if there's a relation there, Johnson and Johnson, 7 and 17. Isaac and Jayton. Might have to check where they're from there. Well, let's check it out. Isaac jo Johnson, number 7, the captain from Jefferson City, Missouri. 17. And Jayton Johnson from Columbia, Missouri. Okay, maybe no relation. Those are not too they're far away from each other, though. <laughs> they're both seniors. <laughs> they keep it complicated for us. Both seniors, they could be. Well, we might find out for you here at halftime. But as Molly was saying, uh, two first-team all-conference for your pioneers. Uh, both leading scorers, leading points for the team. Rick Kavinga has one more goal than Johnny, but Johnny has more assists. We also did have a couple second-teamers for your pioneers. Uh, Duarte Chapellas, the defender center back, and Nico Theberg. Did I get it right? Trey Berge. Trey Berge. I mean Thank you. Or Tay Berge, not Trey Cana Berge. The Canadian, the Canadian Frenchman <laughs> with a second team all conference for your pioneers. Guillerme at the top of the box finds Rick. Tony, left foot, right at the keeper, blocked again. And what a great play. What a great play and what a great save. Saved by number one, Nicolas Cabras, and another dangerous goal-scoring opportunity. A uh, little bit confusing. Both men for the Pioneers still fighting over that same ball. So that's a second time here our attackers are going after the same ball, kind of obstructing each other. Uh, nonetheless, the shot was off. It was a good shot. That goalkeeper came off the line and saved it. But what a nice pass there. Very nice play. Very nice play, played into a nice area. Munoz here on his right foot, whipping it in, headed out by CMU pretty clearly there. Meets Cozy to Chartier. Up the left-hand side, but it's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a Eagles throw-in. Kevin Wardlaw, the coach for the Pioneers, definitely up off the bench and giving feedback today. You can feel the pressure from him wanting this win, but that's just postseason for all of us fall coaches. That is postseason, and no guarantees you'll make it to the championship round here. So both of these teams, only the first team regular season goes on, which was Missouri Valley. So from there on, it's either you win your conference tournament or you get an at-large bid. Mid America might qualify, probably will qualify for an at-large worst case scenario. Currently, I think they're 21st. In the table, on the in the top 25, I think they're ranked 21st, which does set them up nicely as I believe this year 48 to go through. Last yeah. year was 40, this year 48. Different setup this year for the NAIA National Championship that will end up, so you'll have a two host weeks. I think up to two home games. In the At the national level? Yes. I think they did a little bit different this year, like the top eight and the bottom eight, it's just a single game. And then there's the middle having sights of three. Got it. That Nasco was sense. trying to explain it to me. No, that makes sense. That's why I'm coming up with maybe the second game. Guillermo on his right foot. Oh. But, yeah, I believe it's something, in theory, uh, one plays 48 down t through the top eight. And then nine to 40 are in sights of three or something like that. So, most likely, MNU is going to be in that middle pack. It's just a matter of if we host it or if we travel, depending on how we do here in the conference tournament, of course. And the final championship site in Wichita, Kansas. So it'd be nice to get there, the Pioneer, have a 
definitely a very interested team this year. Could be the year to get back to the Sweet 16, Final Four, final, possibly, what we all want, a national championship. Absolutely. Nacho with a throw in here deep in the left side of the field. I got to give my mom a shout out who just texts me. Hi, mom. <laughs> She didn't say. Thank you to all our viewers all over the world, America and the world, and even here in Olathe watching us online. It's a windy day here at Pioneer Field. The temperature has gone up now. It is. It's nice out here. I thought it would be cooler than this, but it really does feel nice. High kick there by Johnny, who has not been able to get into this game. He is very controlled here by Central Methodist. Every time he gets the ball, there's two or three men swarming around him. Number 14, Lucas Perrin, the Frenchman, making sure he tries to get Johnny Munoz off of his game. <laughs> Stork wins a throw in for Central Methodist. Johnson with the ball still. Still on this right. Erden. There you go, on this right hand side. Chuck Pellas with the long clear. And we are missing Mikel, the other center back, third team all conference. And a very big presence. A, v a huge presence. Literally, biggest guy on the team for sure, but just has a loud voice, really demands that back line, excellence from that back line of him and you. He is that leader on the back line, in, in my opinion, and you're, you're seeing it on both ends of the boxes. Uh, also attacking wise, set pieces and defensively, and that's maybe why it appears right now with Central Methodist between their Number 17, Johnson, and number 10, Stork. Usually, Miguel would be in that area controlling or leading his back line and center mid to control the opponent's attack. Oh, being got to Nico. Nico tries to play it in, clear it off the back line, and a foul here by Mid America. We do have some construction going on here, if you see it behind us at the Pioneer football field with a new complex groundbreaking last month and everything's slowly starting for a beautiful new athletic complex. We, are, we do have some substitutions here for Mid-America. He's moving the bench on here. Palacios, number 28, Dennis Palacios is going to come in. And he's joined here by number 19, Preston McKay. Foul here by Johnny Munoz. On the Eagle side, it will be number nine, Liam Arthur. And he is here. That who's tied for their leading goal scorer. We talked about him earlier. He's here and looking to come in here with 18 and a half minutes left to play. Probably a very strategic change here by the coaching staff. They do have five, not leading scores, but seven, seven or six goals between five different players for Central Montana. So that's a very diversified attack compared to your Pioneers who have two leading goal scorers. One of them has been taken out of the game so far. Johnny Munoz has been able to get his usual game in. Preston McKay is the man coming up, uh, in for Mid-America. Guillermo coming out, and Palacio will replace Tony. Tony had a good game uh, so far. Good to have him back, as Molly said, from the red card. Rick looking for McKay, finds Munoz. There's Johnny, nice touch to Nico. The left foot of Tavares. Golazo, 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 Nico. Again, left foot of Chow. It's like a replay of last game. We were silent here just watching Literally. it. Literally. 
And I think both Molly and I saw it coming. He took that touch to the left foot. We both kind of looked at each other as the ball slowly rolled into the net. I couldn't it. Oh, DT sitting here next to me announcing subs, and all of a sudden I go, oh, my gosh, that's Nico's left foot and a goal. The Canadian Frenchman with the first goal of the match, 1-0 for your Pioneers. We will watch the replay here, and we also have the goal line cam. Nice touch there by Johnny Munoz with the assist. Tabers, that's his third of the season, and it comes at another critical time. Here comes Central Methodist now. That was almost identical to the goal against Baker last week. Identical. He likes to cut it to his left foot and finds that back back post side netting. And Munoz, we've said multiple times, you've said, David, he hasn't been super involved, but, man, he found him at a good time. And that's all. That's why he's the first team all-conference. He can be marked. He can be game planned against, but all you need sometimes is one play, one touch, and just like that gets another assist. Here comes a corner piece. Corner set piece for Central Methodist. Bad corner, can't clear it, goes to another one. So nice assist for Johnny Munoz there to add to his tally. His seventh of the season, Johnny Munoz. Ten goals, seven assists. Ooh, yeah, really? Yeah, cleared off the line there by Pioneers, and it's Johnny Munoz once again. So two big plays. Johnny Munoz was the assist, and Johnny Munoz off the line there. Dangerous cross. I think Enzo went down, or Chapala. It was like a collision there. Chapala's looked like he lost his shoe, is why the, the center official stopped the time there briefly. Long throw, and again by Johnson into the box. Cleared by Chapalas. Nico fights for that ball. Nice pressure now by Pioneers. Five minutes after the goal is very important. Pace of the game is picked up again by both teams after the Pioneer goal. Leading the game 1-0, Nico Treberge. You're getting closer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Molly, Molly Kay here with her international travels over Europe. <laughs> Knows a little bit of the different European countries absolutely and you are the south american expert there or you go it's uh you've nice. got the two of the big continents covered and then both of us sitting here in kansas watching some beautiful soccer today cleared by voitel out of bounds throw in for the eagles wind picked up again you can hear it in the microphone and see it in every flag that waves around here in this north side of the soccer field Dispossessed by Munoz. Munoz gets fouled. Wants a free kick for Mid-America. 15 minutes left. 15 minutes left. Absolutely. Johnny took for the ball from him, and CMU grabbed his jersey to keep him from going on the attacking side too quickly. Probably a smart foul there, very strategic, even though he's playing like he didn't know what he did. Pretty clean match so far. No, no cards, no hard tackles. Boytel with a long ball, intercepted by Johnson. And Central Methodist wins that ball, plays into number nine. He's not going to get there. Enzo off the line. Number nine, Liam Arthur. The Englishman, Boytel to Chartier. Chartier long clear to Rikavinga, flicks it on. Cleared by Adrian Stoke, and now to the left side, who plays it into Schmickel. Schimmel. Schimmel can't control it. Enzo picks up the ball at the back line. We have, do have a sub standing here in front of us for the CMU Eagles. Halpin, number 19, will come on at the next available time. As Carvalho sends a long ball, makes it all the way through. Possessed by the Eagles, cleared. Ultimately out of bounds by the Pioneers. Johnson will throw in, and here comes Halpin in the match. Looking like he's taking off number 11, Schimmel, on the far side.
And even 19, number 19, uh, three goals, one assist. So it's a very number even number attack by Central Eagles, Methodist. Number 19, we basically have five men from Central Methodist with uh, seven, seven, six, four, six goals. And then the next five all have three or two goals to contribute. So that's a lot of Absolutely. players getting. Ultimately, the season total for the Eagles, though, 46 goals to their opponents, 28. A lot of people, a lot of goals. Hopping with the ball, left side, head up. Right footed, playing on the left side. Nicely defended by Nico. Gets fouled, referee says play on. And Munoz once again now has picked up his game tremendously. Ever since that assist. Absolutely, and he's been doing his work on the defensive side too. Winning several balls in the midfield. Clearing that ball right off the goal line. Absolutely. Throw in here by Chartier. Finds Hovinga. What was Central Methodist total goal again? I s 46 total goals. 46, that's quite a bit compared to Mid-America's 38 total goals. Absolutely. And they held their opponents to 28. Was that correct? That's correct, 46 and 28. As McKay here on the left-hand side has Hovinga across, driving at the defender, goes to his left, shot wide. Ooh, nice little pl play by McKay. No one deflection. On Goal kick. He had a good opportunity, just could not get a solid shot off his left foot there. Mid America only left 20 goals in, so that's a, quite a big difference. A little bit less goals, but nicely balanced from offense to defense. Yeah, and I'll have to rely on you. Is 46 goals in 17 games a lot? That's quite a bit. That that's to me sounds like a lot. Yeah, that's almost three, three goals per game. Absolutely. Not a, not a mathematician here. That's a big number. As we were saying, uh, all-conference team was announced. Cent uh, Mid-America had five players between first, second, and third team, and to Central Methodist has four. Basil and Erne, the defender, was a first-team All-American for Central Methodist. Not the defender, I'm sorry. Number Bas six, the far side? Yep, Basil Erne. Er yep, he is. Munoz looking for McKay. Can't find him. Left center back. Nice tackle there by McKay. He wins the ball head up on the left side, crosses it to Rick. Oh, what a collision here. The goalie. Rick could not get to it clearly as the goalie came in, punched it out, quick deflection, went over the crossbar. What a tackle, what a cross by McKay. Dangerous opportunity for Rick Hovinga there looking to get it. Look at that, there's that goal cam coming in nicely. And it was that close. Bang, bang. Palacios now with a turnover, plays it into McKay. Back to Palacios. Head up, nice ball to Rick. Get to touch, gets in the box. Here comes the shot or the cross. Ho, 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 ho. A hard cross back, back across the face of the goal. Nobody could get a foot on it. Mid America is looking for that crucial second goal to, of the match here. I thought that was it, truly. That was a Great chance, good ball across, and we had three people across the face of goal, just no one could get a touch on it. Cozy, quickly forward to McKay, looking for Hovinga, finds him on his left foot, on his right, on his left, ah, shot! <laughs> saved! Saved, goalie still has yes. Handball! Handball, referee, the referee says no. VAR review there. Super intense moments, exciting moments here of the match. Two dangerous, clear opportunities, Hovinga and Palacios. Quickly running forward for the Eagles. Shot blocked by Chartier. Shot by number eight, Alvaro Parejo, was deflected by Chartier. 14 now with a strong tackle, and he's a little bit down, Lucas Perrin. And he is going to come out, number 14 is coming out for Central Methodist, being replaced by number 26, Sofian Jawozi. Ooh, where's he from? Another Frenchman. Thank you for watching us from France. Sorry for butchering all the last names there with the accents. For Central Methodist, we do. We have a lot of Italians, Englishmen, Spain, Netherlands. 
France. Colasios looking for Munoz, can't find him. Played forward, Halpin. Controlled by Vitas Voitel who plays it off to McKay. McKay has come in nicely here in the first, first half. Substitute. Wind picks up, a little chilly at the moment. But overall a very nice day here at Olitha. Changes here in front of us for the Pioneers, just under eight minutes. They'll come in at the next chance they have with Nacho on the ball and some time. Plays it forward for Rick, nice running. Turn. Left nice. foot, driving up the left-hand side. Left foot, across, McKay. Oh! Golazo! Preston McKay, 2-0 Pioneers. What a goal, what a cross, what a finish. What a nice ball there by Rick Havinga. Wow. Started with that turn and half field. Pushed through the foul, got all the way into the box, picked his head up, played it across the face of the goal for the nice tap-in goal by Preston McKay. Pioneers 2, Central Method is 0. Absolutely. That started here in our half with Nacho playing the long ball for Rick. Rick turned, was held on the jersey by O'Toole, but the center official, you could tell, let him play on, let him play to the advantage, and it worked well. Left foot across the goal, wow. That was awesome, McKay there. Ultimately, no chance for the goalkeeper. Well deserved second goal, Mid-America. Preston McKay there with, uh, we'll check his goals. He's the third leading goal scorer for your Pioneers. As three changes here come on for the Pioneers, number 30, number 21. Six, six goal. And number 15. Preston McKay. Sixth goal of the season for Preston McKay, and he came in nicely as a substitute. We had said earlier, Rick Kavinga has played a very good game. He's on it on the 50-50s. Another 50-50 ball won by Havinga with that turn for your first team all-conference player, and they make a difference. Both Rick Kavinga and Johnny Munoz on the stat sheet today. Foul there called by the AR on the far side. It'll be a set piece for the Pioneers. What a huge goal with eight minutes left here. Well, now six in the first half. Absolutely. Two to zero Pioneer leading this game. And remember, we are into the wind in this half. If we the wind are. stays the way it is, the wind will be at our back in the second half, which could change things. Here it is, Nico standing over the ball. He's going to whip it in with his left foot, plays it short to Chartier. Can't get there. MNU still has it. Nico across, too far ultimately for McKay or Hovinga. Goes out of bounds for an Eagles throw in. Substitutes came in, as Molly said. Kike is playing that six role at the center mid. Palacios, the left back for Nacho. And Nicolas Bivacqua, the Chilean, giving Johnny Munoz a little breather. Absolutely. Last five minutes of the half here. Some fresh legs and an early break for some of those guys who do a lot of the leg work. Throw in for the Pioneers. Bivacqua. Left footed cross. Oh, not defended, Nico. A little confusion by Central Methodist. Struggling to get the ball out of the back. And their number nine, Liam Arthur, on a substitute, has not contributed a ton compared to 17 Johnson, who was a lot more dangerous. Yeah, he did seem to be. The wind right in our face, if you can hear the wind whipping into our microphones as well as some construction noise going on at Pioneer Field, like David mentioned earlier, breaking ground on a huge new facility for MNU we're excited about. Voitel with the long ball. McKay heads it across. Hovinga puts it down. McKay cleared by the Eagles. A very active McKay. Very much so. He's been in the middle of all the action. 
Chop Palace. Chop Palace to Calderon. Calderon to Rick. Cannot turn this time. Cleared by Central Methodist. Last couple minutes, 2-0 would be nice going into the second half, but it looks like Pioneer was a little hungry looking for the third goal already. That would make things very complicated for CMU in the second half. Here is the goal line cam on the goal. Nicely tapped in, even knocked the camera over. Nice form by McKay, sometimes as our fellow alumni Justin Wack knows, or myself. I've missed plenty of sitters back in my day. Though sometimes the easiest play sometimes can become hard. Absolutely. If memory serves, it was a it was a day here on the opposite side of the field against Treveca Nazarene when David Gonzalez missed almost that exact same spot. It might have been easier. It might have been easier, I'm he, not gonna lie. We have that. He that, sent that it replay, over the so top. We have that. We have that somewhere. We've talked in the, the past the about, absolutely. It's on uh, the MNU Soccer YouTube. You can go back and find that sometime. And when was it, 2009? Ooh, a long time Trevecca? ago. 2008, 2008 season. 2008 season. I would like to say we did win that game, thanks to yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Justin Wack didn't <laughs> mention that to me yeah, as we had our alumni dinner the other night. We'll keep talking here as the ball says out about it. Yeah, he, did, he failed to mention that we ended up winning 2-1. to one. <laughs> with a goal and assist by yours truly, so. He didn't mention that. All I was mentioned to me was that I need to say that on air. So Justin, it is coming true. This is the, your moment. We got 52 current viewers through YouTube channel of Heart of America or the Pioneer Network. Thanks for watching us all over the world. And to fellow alumni, 2-0 Mid-America over Central Methodist University. Two minutes left. Nico wins the ball half field. Preston McKay breaking out right side. Can he play him? And he plays him in, but just shortly. Short ball there by Nico. Preston manages to win it back and now loses the ball. Oh, strong tackle by Kika, and that is a red card. Red card for Kika Morales. We will need a VAR review up here. Replay, he did come in strong. Cleats were a little up high. Referee did not hesitate and immediately reached for his back pocket. Huge game changer here. 100%. Two minutes left on the clock in the first half, even with the 2-0 advantage for the Pioneers, playing 10 men to 11 for a whole half changes things immensely. That was Kike, like we said, who had come on right around the seven minute mark. Played about five minutes and came in hard on that challenge. Hopefully, is that number 26, the Frenchman? Sofian Jawozi. He seems to be okay. Kika has to be consoled here by his teammates. Just not the smartest decision. Half field, not really dangerous. We will see the replay here. Josie seems to be fine, walking off, no no problem. Oof. Thankful for that. He came in late, did not get any of the ball. The camera's a little far, but. Pretty strong. It's an or orange red all day. It's an orange red all day. Kevin Wardle on the sideline, talking with this fourth official in front of us, as well as the media team here for the video replay. That was a strong tackle, but thankfully, Jauzi, number 26 for the Eagles, does seem to be okay. He's asking to come back on immediately. You'll see him run on. Seems to be fine. And excessive force is the term that the referees here use. He might have lifted up as a cleats. Maybe he didn't get him, but it was just too excessive force. And 
unfortunately for your Pioneers, the correct call. Central Method is now with a minute 30 left, trying to get a goal back, a goal in. Nice cut. And across. Seems critical here for the Pioneers to try to go into the halftime 2-0 up and not concede one. Chuck Pellas with a clear. We're going to have a long throw in for Central Methodist. Johnson coming in to get the throw in. Big man coming up. Number five, I Adrian Stoke. One minute remaining in the half. Back post. This ball's going to try to be playing to Liam Arthur here, your number nine. Defended by Chapalas and McKay. They play a short instead. Back to Johnson. Jauzi. Gets it through. Johnson on his oh. right. Man down. Referee says no, thank you. Play goes on. Rick Vingo with a clear. 30 seconds left to go. You can feel the pressure here. CMU wants a goal in this 30 seconds, and the Pioneers fighting like heck to get out of it. Not calling that penalty as man went down, and I think that's the right call. It would have been really soft if he called that, I think. Out of yeah. bounds by Voitel. Throw in for the Eagles. Ten, Ten seconds. seconds. Nine. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Long ball in. Four. Headed out of bounds, and that is halftime. We will get that replay, possibly, of that possible PK here. We did not get it, but referee said no. It didn't look like it from up here. It was kind of soft. 2-0 for your Pioneers at halftime. We will be back. Our halftime score, Woo. Woo. Two.
Are we back on here? Here we go. Welcome to the second half here at Pioneer Field. Men's soccer between a quarterfinal matchup, the CMU Eagles and the MNU Pioneers. Currently the Pioneers having a 2-0 lead, but playing a man down after a red card in the uh, last two minutes of the first half. Goals by Nico Teberge and Preston McKay for the Pioneers. This should be a very intense half, David. What do you think? Very intense. Luckily for Mid America, we do have the wind for us. And we got our first fast break here. Tony plays out our left to Nacho. Nacho carries on the left side. Head up or long shot. Pass to Nico. Goes down. Nothing there. Yeah, very, uh, very unfortunate red card to the right ward. Too aggressive, too strong with two minutes left. Wrong side of the field, nothing to play there except a normal 50-50 ball. Game was under control, two to zero. Mid-America was very dominant, even though both teams had chances, but two zero was the correct result at halftime. We will see what it brings with the red card or if Mid-America ices this game or gets a third and puts the game away. Absolutely. Rick there took it to the corner. Throw in for the Pioneers. Chartier will take it. For those of you wondering, uh, Mid America made the red card adjustment. Now are just playing a 4-4-1 with Rick Kavenga being the lone man up top. Guillermo made the sacrifice there for Kike Morales' red card. Central Methodist chooses to start their number nine up top. Alvaro Perojo. Sorry, Liam Arthur. Yeah, he didn't start the first half, but... Um, came in midway through. Tony here driving. Tony with a very good game coming back from that red card. Absolutely. He's made his presence felt. Good to have him back. Munoz up the right-hand side. Taking his time. Goes right at the guy. 26 there on that side. Jauzi played out of bounds for a Pioneer corner. Nice first three minutes by Pioneer setting the tone of a man down, but we are going to take it to you and make sure we take care of business. Munoz and Theberge. First and second team all conference players, set piece. Let's see if we take advantage of the wind. Duartes Chapelas, second team all, all conference. It's who they are looking for being grabbed currently. Let's see if the referee sees it. Comes across. Binga can't flick it on, and Central Method is well clear. Finds the head of Cozy. Nico sends it on, finds Rick. Nico, left foot to Munoz, making a run. Right foot, try to tap it across, but ultimately goes over and behind. It'll be a goal kick for the Eagles. Basil. The left center back, first team all conference for Central Methodist with the ball. Head up. Finds Halpin. Halpin to Josie. Nice strong tackle by Kotsi. And plays it out through Nico, Nico, Kotsi. Kotsi, Rick. Oh, can't handle the ball there. Basil. Basil plays it to Stroke. Stuck. to their captain, Isaac Johnson. Mid-America pretty compact with a 4-4, 4-4-1 in this case, the four midfielders. As we've spoken in the last three games, it's a usual four, always the same four. They complement each other well. They're used to each other. They know each other's role. Makes it a tough center mid for opposition. Half oh. went out wide. Well done by the freshman Chartier. Pioneers only freshman on the field. Right back number two, Tom Chartier from France. CMU looking to set up another set piece here. Any dead ball, out of bounds, anything, they really seem to have a play for it. Johnson number seven 
with the long throw. Tries to find a man on this side of the box, doesn't. Munoz tries to clear. CMU chipping it back into the area, but cleared by MNU again. Munoz and Tay Bearish trying to drive forward, but Eagles possess it again. Find Johnson here on the left-hand side. Sending a ball through, looking for Arthur. Can't find him. Chartier cleared. Finding Hovinga, but he's one on four, even if he can get it. What a presence, though, for the number nine, Rick Hovinga. Fights for every ball. Big, strong, and, and just like that, four men defending. And he's still some dangerous, even against four men. Applying pressure there. Basil with the ball in, controlled by Kotsi. Kotsi to Chapalas. Chapelas. Do do. Lo nice long ball to Rick. It's going to sail with the wind. Yeah, the wind showed itself there. That ball wouldn't have been played the same in the first half. That ball went quickly. Erne throwing in the ball. Basel Erne from Switzerland. Basel is a town in Switzerland, beautiful town on the northwest corner of Switzerland. I've been many times. Strong soccer team there too. Yeah, we actually went to a Champions League. We, meaning me and my husband, the assistant coach for MNU, went to a soccer game. Manchester United versus Basel in the Champions League. Who won? Um, Basel beat them, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me for all you Man United fans. Uh, quite honestly, I don't know how you still have a head coach. It is, we, you know, maybe not for long. We'll see. He had a uh, Ten Hag was, uh, <laughs> you know, he started strong. Now he's really being, you know, we don't have to talk about Manchester United, but his decisions about Ronaldo are being criticized. Just everything. We'll when you, and when you don't get results and when you don't play to the to the level and history of long ball here of, of Man United, you are going to get that criticism. Absolutely, as you should. When you also get to push the little, nothing by the referee. But we went to that game in Basel hoping to see. Oh, Tony nice finding team. Rick. Hovinga, Tabersh looking for Munoz running. Offside, offside. Flag up on the flag up, offside. Awesome. What a beautiful play, though. It would have ended up in a team goal. Rick Hovinga just offside there, but four or five players being involved. Quick passes, quick combinations, through balls. Absolutely. As I was saying, we went to that game to see, I did, mainly to see uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He didn't end up playing, which is a real bummer. Oof. He then made his way to the MLS. He did, yeah, and then back to AC Milan, right? Yep, that's correct. He is, he is an, a specimen. So we went there to see, I went there mainly to see Zlatan Ibrahimovic play because I am a fan. Um, and But he didn't play, and we had to watch, you know, I don't know. Oh, Hovinga here off his chest looking for Munoz. Can't find him. Johnson's going to clear. Premier action tomorrow morning, 7.30, full in Man United. Brentford, West Ham, Burnley, Crystal Palace, Everton, Brighton, Man City, Bournemouth, Sheffield United, Wolves, Newcastle, Arsenal. Halpin here on the left-hand side, left foot looking across, deflected by Voitel. I know, Premier League action. Everyone's saying who should they captain in, the, in their fantasy Premier League. Is it Salas, uh, Sala or is it um, Holland? Oh, you got to go with Holland. <laughs> <laughs> both at home, both against teams at the bottom of the table. It's hard not to go with Holland. Set piece here by number 11, Schimmel. Two men against the Carvalho there. Plays into Carvalho. Flicked on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Top of the net. Top of the net. Dangerous opportunity. Unmarked. Number Halpin. 19 with the header. Definitely. Halpin, who came in as a sub in the first half and has now started this half. Very interesting set piece. They were there, He was unmarked the whole time. And sure enough, it was nice ball to the first runner. Flicked it over. Luckily top net over the crossbar with the wind 
launches it, looking for Rick, headed around here. Finally finds the foot of number 12 for the Eagles. Erden, looking for Halpin up the left-hand side, will find him. Pressure from Chartier. Nice challenge, but out of bounds for a corner for the Eagles. It'll be another set piece. And the Eagles finally finding their play here early in the second half with a man up. Trying to get a goal back here in this game. Get the first goal of the match. Currently Schimmel. 2 0. Schimmel will be the man who takes it. Played short to Erden. Back to Schimmel. Right foot. Whips it across. We'll find Munoz, who heads it out for the Pioneers. Basso with the cross. Arthur can get ahead to it. And Enzo Carvalho controls and slows the game down. Physical play there in the box. Hovinga and Arthur. Hovinga talking to the center official shortly. Now possessed by the Pioneers. I'm sure the Pioneers will want to try to possess the ball as much as they can with 10 men. And truly see how fast these 33 minutes can go. Dispossessed by Basel, Erne looking for Halpin. Arthur across left foot. Doesn't get a strong contact. Carvalho able to fall on the ball. Boy, that was dangerous. If he, he would have gotten better contact, that could, could have easily been the Eagles' first goal. That was dangerous. And hey, hold on, we got a Nico running through. Nico's going to get in. Takes a touch. Ooh, saved. Saved by the goalkeeper. He got a finger to it. And that was a 3 0, oh, gentlemen. What a ball. What a touch by Nico. It was a good shot. And the goalie barely got a finger. Wow, that long ball. Nico was all by himself, had time to put it. He did take it on his right foot. He is a lefty, but still, wow. Nice save from the Eagles goalkeeper, keeper Cabras. Nicolas Cabras, and I'm pretty sure he was an all-conference player here. Ball whipped in by Nico on his left foot. Hovinga misses it. Tony tries to send it back in. Off Johnson's head. Tay Bearish playing back to Cozy under pressure. Cozy looking for Nacho on the far side. Finds Tony in the middle, looking to turn, dispossessed. Applies pressure, Halpin, here comes for the Eagles. He has a man across, we'll see if he'll play him. No, looking for Arthur through. Right to the goalkeeper of the Pioneers, Enzo Carvalho. Here comes Nico's replay there, nice touch. It goes to his right foot. Nice, it was center of the goal, but the goalkeeper there, number one with the finger. Tip saved. He's not an all-conference team, but he's come up with at least three very good saves this game. Chartier loses the ball, and here comes Central Methodist again. Nice ball in. Nothing there on the second one. Central Methodist playing with a 4-3-3. Three clear attackers leading by the number nine, Arthur. Playing the number nine role. Left forward, Schimmel. And right forward. Now he switched to the right side, number 19. Halpin. All three have been very active this second half. Just a quick reminder, Mid-America's missing their, their leader and their anchor center back, Miguel. Dispossess here. Central Methodist goes in the box. Long cross. Haplin can't control it. Shimel blocked by Nacho. Yeah, we'll have to see a man down and missing their leader captain in the back with Mikel. Vitus Voitel taking the armband and that position today. Erden with the ball. Plays it back. Stok. Johnson. Halpin. Do do all over him. Referees. Tries to go down once the call. Center Nothing. official's not going to give it. It'll be out of bounds, pioneer throw. Halpin went down right there, hoping for to set up another set piece for the Eagles. Wasn't given. And we'll have a change here for the Pioneers next chance we get. Preston McKay, who was very active in the first half, will come in at some point. 
Pioneer is playing back through Carvalho. Plays it long with the wind again, sends it long. Goalkeeper It'll to goalkeeper. Goalkeeper to goalkeeper. And we might see a lot of this as uh, the Eagles are now pushing up the field. Mid America man down. Erne looking for Arthur, heads it to Halpin. Shot. It'll go wide. But a foul called on number 14, Cozy. That's Halpin was preparing that right footed shot. A little bump there, a little push. Referee calls a foul and a dangerous opportunity here. Nice spot for a right footed shooter. Number 10 on the ball, Mateus Stork, the senior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Mateus. Pioneers setting up the wall here. Looks like there's going to be three in the wall. Carvalho organizing his defense. Mateus is one of those guys with six goals in the season. And four assists, the number 10. Brazilian. We got a nice view from here. Low shot right to the middle. Wasted opportunity there by the Eagles, and Mid-America's looking to play long. Carvalho finds Tony. Numbers on this right side, nice switch, unfortunate. I mean, you had two runners, Taberge and Munoz were both running, couldn't find them. Arthur here for the Eagles. Over to the left-hand side, Halpin. And Halpin and Chimo, the two wingers, switch constantly all game long from left winger to right winger. Mid-America not happy with the referee crew all game, and they haven't shown a ton of confidence. It'll be another corner for the Eagles. Jauzi setting the ball down, but looks like Schimmel will come across. Like David mentioned, those two wingers have been switching side to side. Schimmel seems to be the one that likes this corner with his right foot. 19, Hamlin got the header to it last time. Different setup now, Arthur moving in the box. Played low, cleared by the Pioneers for a throw in. We'll see if they set it up as another set piece in that long ball. Schimmel throws it, top of the box. Johnson across, challenged. Halpin, right foot, shot, deflected by Carvalho. What a save. Schimmel. What a save, what a shot by Hamlin, all power. 19, Haplin, Haplin? I think. Halpin. Halpin. We're, we're messing up his name. <laughs> Halpin from Luton, England. Luton, England. But Carvalho, the Florianopolis Brazilian, senior, also a leader for your pioneers. We got a little, little confrontation. Shim a little upset at Nico. A little frustration from the Eagles as they are down 2-0. Number 11, Shimo was not happy with Nico's studs, cleats, nothing there. Johnson will throw the ball in. Looks like they'll go long. Several eagles in the box. Carvalho making his health big with the hands. Trying to drive it in. They are, it is into the wind that way. It isn't near as dangerous as it was in the first half seeming, seemingly. But another corner on this side. I think that's the fourth corner on this flag, this half. Schimmel will take it again. One unmarked man. Two now. As Mid-America chooses to, look at that, two man on the Enzo Carvalho. Finally, Johnny steps in. The ball goes there, cleared by Chartier. Interesting defensive technique, playing more of a zone defense on corner kicks. We'll see. 
We'll see if we'll pay the price for that or if we end up victorious. Johnson with a throw in. Vitas Voitel clears it. And Mid America will clear the ball off the field. Playing with a man down 25 minutes in. Central Method is making a push. Stork finds Schimmel. Schimmel shot. It'll go over the bar. Here's your flag. Preston McKay will come on. And let's see if Dennis Palacios gets in as well. They are going to let him. Looks like Rick Hovinga's coming off for Preston McKay. And number 23, Tony, coming off for number 28, Palacios. Long goal kick by Carvalho, headed immediately by the Eagles. Kicked high by the back line of the Pioneers, which we will see a lot of that, I'm sure. Tabash here using his speed. Jauzi trying to apply some pressure. Out of bounds for a Pioneer throw. Munoz will take it. Never mind, he leaves it for Chartier. Yeah, a lot of game management comes in at this point in the game with a man down lead any little break any little time make that clock keep ticking will be beneficial for your pioneers Voitol plays it across. Johnson off his chest back to the goalkeeper. Cabras. Erne with the ball. A switches fields to Johnson. Munoz Pressure nice from tackle. Munoz. Palacios. McKay running. Intercepted by the defense of the Eagles. McKay with a challenge and wins the ball. McKay now one-on-one -on -one with a Johnny? man across. Munoz too far. Munoz was right there near the penalty area. A well-played ball probably would have been a goal, but it was too much. Eagles throw it, take, quick, take it quickly. Johnny Munoz, the senior, working really hard to get back knowing his team's playing a man down. And that's what you want to see from your leaders. All out, he had made an 80 yard run to get into the box. Arthur Jauzi, Arthur cleared by Nacho, but not completely. Stork Halpin to his left foot, sends it across. Dangerous, Arthur. Arthur and Chapellis were all tangled up there as he came across the face of goal. Nothing was called as far as a foul. Just both guys going hard for the ball. Nice defensive work by Pioneers there as the ball was played into Arthur and the earlier one just collapsing defense. We had four men all over that loose ball. Did not let the play develop. Stoke with the ball. To Johnson, back to Stoke. Over to Vassal. Erne, Erne to Erden. A lot of Frenchmen on the field. And what very commonly in NI football, a lot of internationals on both sides. A foul here, called here by the center official. We'll set up another set piece here for the Eagles in a pretty dangerous area, albeit the wind is in their face. These set pieces are something that is a CMU staple and have been for years. Big, chunk, uh, big coaching changes for Central Methodist. 
as their head coach that had been there several years. Took another job down in Florida. Still a lot of the same players. Still a very good program. Just one in the wall, Tay Barish. Lots of Eagles and Pioneers looking to run across. Right foot. It looks like it goes right, and it does, right to Enzo Carvalho, the MNU goalkeeper. Nico's going to take a long run. He's onside. Let's see if he can get to this or if it's still out of bounds. Johnny making a run with Preston. Nico holds it up and gets a corner. Nicely done there by Nico and Enzo. Really good execution by the Pioneers. Applauded by the whole bench here. And it's a nice break for Pioneer defense. Trey Bears, Tay Bears, I don't know why I put that R in there. Tay Bears standing over the ball with his left foot. Looks like he'll whip it across. Wind is going in the direction of the Pioneer goal. The center official dealing with some guys being too physical. Here we go. Left foot across, headed out by the Eagles. Stork. Erne across, Ooh. nice tackle. Ooh, I thought it was a nice tackle. That looked like he got the ball. But the referee called an offensive foul on a Central Methodist player and it's gonna give the ball to Mid-America right before that strong tackle by the Pioneers. So we are gonna get a free kick going Pioneer direction instead of a possible yellow card. And we will have a sub for your pioneers, Nicolas Bebacqua, number 30. Center official having to do some organizing that it, several people were left confused by what he called. Cozy takes the ball quickly, but before the center official had let him play, so they'll set it back up. Played off his left foot, looking for Chartier down the right-hand side. Can't control it. Out of bounds for an Eagles throw. Pioneers applying some pressure here, even with 10 men playing high. Halpin kicked out of bounds Chartier. Oh, but called the foul, taken quickly by the Eagles. Played quickly by Van Erden. Back and over, switching it to the right side to Johnson. 18 minutes left. Mid-America very compact in the mid and defense as Central Methodist can't break through. Nice tackle by Nacho, picks his head up. No, keeps going, nice. To Johnny, Johnny plays it to Nacho. What a nice run, can he play it across to Preston? He does, is Preston gonna get to it? Ball sails a little bit, Preston's gonna get to it a little bit wide, takes a touch, head up. We got a 1v1, numbers in the box, left foot. Decides to take a shot. Nice little counter attack there by Nacho and Johnny. Preston got in, did not make the best decision after that touch. And that's sometimes where the win actually plays against you, especially for a team like Pioneers who like to possess and combine and play short, quick little penetrating dangerous through balls. The win will be your best defender sometimes. The Chilean international coming in, Nicolas Bevacqua for Mr. Johnny Munoz. Strong tackle by Tom Chartier, no call by the referee. And number 17, Jayton Johnson will be coming in for the Eagles. Coming off will be number 26. And number 17, Johnson had a, he was a flip thrower. Entering the match for the Eagles, number 17. And very dangerous Johnson. man up top the first 15 minutes. Here comes a flip throw. Low this time, easily controlled by Kotsi. But the ball goes back to Johnson, who has now two bad touches in the first 30 seconds of the second half. Kotsi, I mean, uh, Bevacqua with some nice fresh energy for your pioneers there in the mid. Cleared by Nacho, has had a strong game as always there on your left back.
Stork to Erne. Erne to Johnson. Johnson to Schimmel. Arthur looking for Schimmel running. Called out of bounds. It went out the end line. It'll be a goal kick for the Pioneers. As you know from a couple games back, uh, we Pioneers just have to continue to be careful. We had, we're doing game here, homecoming week, correct? 3-0, game was over, nothing was happening. And then last five minutes out of nowhere. Yeah, game, two goals two in goals. the last five minutes? Yeah, two goals and three to two finish with a last couple minutes that were a little rough. So you want to stay focused, 15 minutes left. Pioneers have held strong, and when Enzo Carvalho's name has been called, he has stepped up. Absolutely. Pioneers would love to escape this with a clean sheet, but the Eagles applying a lot of pressure and playing a man up. Johnson here looking to play through. Can't find his man. Chartier clears it. McKay challenges. Called offside as McKay had come from behind the defenders on contact of that pass, play, taken quickly by the Eagles. Erne looking for a runner. No one there. Carvalho will take as much time as he needs until the Eagles force him to pick up the ball. Johnson forces him to pick it up. Carvalho, we can probably expect a long ball here. There's the long ball. McKay is there. Through, but. Is this going to be a corner? Corner it is. A little mistake there by. The Arne, yeah, Arne looked confused about who had had that last touch. Let it roll out of bounds. And this is where the Pioneers have to take advantage of the wind. Set pieces are the key with the wind here at Pioneer Field. It's going to be Nico alone as Johnny Munoz is in the bench right now. Dudu and Boitel making a run. Here comes the cross. Dangerous. Cleared. And still up in the six. Goalie number one comes out strong. Nico, Nicolo Cabras. We do have some more uh, Heart of America postseason matches. The women, Mid-America women play tomorrow. They are hosting uh, Graceland, I believe. And then, of course, Coach Molly Kay over here, women's volleyball, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Same teams, just different uh, different city. Yeah, we, um, we're going to, we're traveling today. Actually, my bus is right over there. Um, we're leaving today and headed to Cedar Rapids, Iowa to play Mount Mercy in the quarterfinal for women's volleyball. Oh, Mount Mercy. I thought it was, uh, I thought you guys were playing Central Methodist. No. No, Mount Mercy. I hope we'll get them, DT. We, uh, this would be a really nice time to get hot in the postseason. Every coach wants that, that's for sure. It'll be a corner here for the Eagles. Here comes the corner kick, left foot and swinger. Sails out of bounds for a Mid-America throw in. Guillerme, number seven for Mid-America will be coming in. Referee stops the match, Nico is down. Preston McKay, number 19, came out for Guillerme. The South African international. Having a strong game in the goal today, number 19. Guillerme, the Brazilian. That's been very good the last couple games. Going to try to lead the attack here with a man down for your Pioneers while Rick Kavinga gets a little breather still. Galvao. 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 Speaking of Brazil, we do have... Copa Libertadores final. Fluminense will host Boca Juniors. That is, I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or Sunday. 
Boca Juniors looking for its seventh Copa Libertadores final. What are you hoping to see happen in that game? You know, as a Peñarol, Peñarol no más, <laughs> Uruguayan, I do hope Boca Juniors <laughs> lose this. <laughs> <laughs> Peñarol with three Copa Libertadores championships. Sorry, five. Five. Oof. That's a, uh, sorry. Bad to slip. All my, sorry to all my Peñarol fans. <laughs> five championships for, for Peñarol. So Boca's just one away right now. I don't want to see him continue to build on that lead. And Flamengo has been the strong team from Brazil in the Libertadores, Flamengo and Palmeiras. But Fluminense will host Boca Juniors in Rio de, ja Rio de Janeiro. Schimmel looking for Johnson. Johnson trying to turn. Can't get his turn, dispossessed by the Pioneers. 12 minutes to play here. Nice substitution. Subs coming in strong. Palacios, Mevacqua for your Pioneers. Even McKay today. Tom Chartier. Numbers got called up and they have responded very nice. Cubs kicks it out for a Central Methodist throw in. Johnson with throwing has been very hard for them against the wind to create any dangerous from this let's see flicked on into the PK mark a little foul called by the referee that Bakwa got fouled in the penalty box pioneers will let the clock keep ticking 2-0 11 minutes left the rest of the men's soccer heart of America matches will be played today. Once again, Park will travel to Benedictine. Sorry, that is women's. John. Benedictine will travel to Park. Mount Mercy will travel to William Penn and Missouri Valley will host Baker. Mid-America would play every salt stay this way. We would play, I believe, the winner of, let's see, we are three. Three, I think this game. Mount I Mercy and William Penn. Because I believe William Penn's two, because Mo Val is one, William Penn's two, worth three, I think. Johnson here, dangerous, cross. The referee says Carvalho did not get a hand on it. Goal kick, oh, throwing, it went out for a throwing, but it was a dangerous cross shot. Looking, looking thing there for the Eagles. Depending on results later today, we'll determine if Pioneers will host or travel. I'm sure these guys will finish up depending on this result. We don't want to take anything for granted. But if the result holds, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys watching results later as this is the first game played today. Long throw in by Johnson. K tries to keep it low. Headed out by the Pioneers. Cozy heads it out for another throw in. It'll be Johnson again. These seem to be more dangerous in the first half as they had the wind with them. Whips that ball in. Pioneers calling for offside there. Coach, can't clear the ball. Co Coach Warla asked for some calm, think. No mistakes here in these last eight minutes. Another dangerous ball. This time cleared by Nacho. Palacios is going to win the 50-50 header. Guillermo is going to run the ball, apply some pressure. Oh. 
Johnson up the left-hand side. Out of bounds, Chartier. It'll be an Eagles throw in. There's a sub here waiting. Johnson takes the throw quickly, long into the box. Arthur with his back to the goal. Plays it wide, Schimmel. A little give and go, doesn't work out. Pioneers play it forward. Nice ball Nacho there. is alone. Nice ball by Guillerme. And he gets the foul, nicely played by Nacho. There was not a very clear opportunity as it looked early on that it could be on a 1v1. He decided to slow the game down, gets fouled. Time clock keeps ticking. Calderon, number 21, is gonna come in for Nacho, number 20. Who's coming off? Number Nacho, number 20. Unfortunately, Nacho did not know what's going on. The referee stopped the clock now. We will hope we get some results later today so the Pioneers can host again in the semifinal round of the conference tournament. And the good thing for men's soccer here is that Missouri Valley, the number one seed, they would only cross pass in the finals. So that would obviously, since Missouri Valley won first place during the regular season, they already have a bid into the next round. So your Pioneers would automatically get a berth into the Assuming that Moval makes it to that game, that's correct. correct. That is correct. And that would be a great final for the Heart of America Conference if it be Vikings against Pioneers. Still a lot of business to take care of here. Six minutes left in this game. Man down for your Pioneers, winning 2-0 to zero with early goals from Preston McKay and... Did score that first one. Nick, Nico's left foot. What do you mean? Nico with a nice replay foot. goal. That's who scored the goal. Substitution tier for the Pioneers. Bakwa and Palacios out. Munoz and Taberge in. I think you call Nico a last name every single time you say is Taberge, Traberge. Well, there's R's. There's all kinds of things in there. I don't know. I don't know. Last, but I will say, last time you were saying he was from France, and we did get that corrected. He is a he is a French Canadian. French Canadian, and a very very well liked and just a good human being, from what I hear. <laughs> he is. He's great. Around campus, Munoz with the ball. Eagles driving forward, ultimately dis dispossessed. Munoz, Guillerme. Pioneers put in some fresh legs here. Well, this is probably going to be an intense last five minutes. Halpin running. Sends it across. Deflected out of bounds by Chapalas. Corner kick. Eagles. 5.20 left in the ballgame. Assuming the result holds. I believe that's Schimmel over there, standing over the corner. Right foot. Cleared by Calderon. Stork here runs it down before going out of bounds. Looking to send it back in. Off the hand, no call by the referee there. By Tony, who now wins the ball. And forces Central Methodist to play it all back to the goalie. Uh, Different rule changes this year. There has been no overtime during regular season. It's just ended up in a tie. Uh, now, during obviously postseason, there would be overtime and penalty shootout. Whatever would be necessary. Munoz, Munoz gets fouled. A couple more minutes will hopefully tick off the clock here. Munoz has started the game earlier, and then when it mattered the most, nice assist to add to his assist tally to Nico, who finished that beautiful left-footed shot. And then Rick Kobinga had the, sec the assist for the second goal by Preston McKay on that nice ball 
that played across the face of the goal for the easy touch in from McKay. Number eight, Pareja. Perojo, Alvaro Perojo, number eight from Central Methodist, will get a yellow card there. Assembly looked like it was for chatting with the official. Clock stopped, more importantly, with 4.02 left to play. Tony standing on the ball, waiting for the referee to resume the match. Pioneer coaching staff making adjustments here, making sure Calderon stays back instead of going up for this ball. Stork heads it for a Pioneer throw in. Munoz, Chartier, sends the ball across, finds the Eagles' defense, controlled, possessed, now pressing from the Eagles, Johnson. Erne on his left foot, Halpin. Great effort by all the pioneers of the team with a man down. Recovery will be important here over the next couple of days as games here are pretty quickly. We've got a foul here. And it looks like Hemlin might have stepped or need Chartier afterwards. Chartier is in some pain down here. The freshman right back. Referee now stops the clock with two minutes and 52 seconds left. Tom Chartier is the pioneer on the ground. Yellow card issued to Nacho, who's on the sideline, number 20, who was just chatting with the center official and just a dumb okay. yellow card for oh, Nacho no. to pick up there as yellow cards will and there's another Eight. yellow card for number 19 19 Halpin Halpin you get that one Chad 19 Halpin for Central Methodist with a yellow card after he got fouled the referee there is explaining no need to hold Chartier I don't know if he kneeled stepped on him hold him down not necessary yeah Chartier was down from the tackle and it looked like Halpin stepped over the yellow top of him, maybe stepped on him. But two yellows at that stoppage of play with 2.52 to go. Schimmel standing over the ball with a CMU set piece in a dangerous area. Munoz, the one man in the wall, lots of men in the box across goal. Center official just taking some notes here to make sure he gets everyone who got the yellows there, the warnings. Some direction given from the sideline here. Coaches Very trying to get their teams in order. Very quiet here. Deflected by Munoz. Run down by Tay Bearish. It was a little intense. It was two, two, two and a half minutes left. It was really all in for Central Methodist with that set piece. If they could get the ball, it was going to be a very interesting last two minutes. Hit off the one man wall by Johnny Munoz. And now it's a big turnover by Central Methodist. Guillermo wins the ball. He's going to hold it at half field. Not called. Still with the ball. Finds Cozy, Tony, Guillerme, looking for more space to waste this time. Hooked there, but let him play. Official has let probably two fouls go at this point, letting the Pioneers waste time. Flicked on by Munoz, but now possessed by the Eagles. Kicked forward, taken by Cozy. I wouldn't even mind a long shot with a... Central Methodist goalie. 
looking a little bit off his line. Center referee calls another foul. He's just been a little off, not not showing a lot of uh, confidence would be the, the right word for both teams. One minute 30 to play. Tay Berge sends it long. Erne here for the Eagles around half field. Still in their own half, the Eagles looking for a way to move forward as they're two goals down. They got to go quickly. And you can feel it on the field for sure. Johnson plays it wise for Schimmel. Wide, excuse me, for Schimmel. On his right, deflected by the Pioneers. One minute remaining in the match. One minute. Erne. Munoz. Played long. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be throw in for the Eagles. Taken by Erne. And it looks like Enzo Carvalho will have another uh, scoreless. Goals allowed, sorry. He's got a he's got a 1.19 goals against average, which is really good for a goalkeeper. This will help. There, 49 saves had a a nice save early in the second half here with a bullet. Van Erden with the ball. 15 seconds to play. 10, 9, 8, 7. Pioneers six, have the ball. Five, wow. Four, three, what two, a result for the Pioneers. The guys are exhausted. Exhausted, exhausted. But a 2 0 must five, win four, game, obviously, in the playoff. Your Pioneers yeah, will move on. Two, and we will rate on results tonight to see if we host or travel. But Tuesday, Tuesday would be the next match. It's been an honor, as always. Pioneers 2, Central Method is 0. Thank you for watching us everywhere. And good luck to, good luck to women's volleyball as they travel tonight to play tomorrow. Thank in you, David. Iowa. Got to go we'll get on my bus. We'll see you next time. See you guys.